well hello everybody and welcome back to your own tutor channel so today we are going to talk about admission process into one of the cheapest universities in Canada that is uh, Memorial University of Newfoundland and Labrador now they pronounce it as uh, new they write it as Newfoundland but they pronounce it as Newfoundland right so I'm going to pronounce it as Newfoundland um, I also got admission into this university in their MBA program and that is what we are going to talk about in this uh, in this uh, particular video as well now these there are many universities in Canada that you can apply to as you all must know but uh, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to search for um, more affordable options for people and uh, I'm going to upload the videos of different universities uh, in this series as well so starting off with the cheapest that I could find but there are other of course that there is a University of Regina and then there is uh, Saskatchewan University and there are other also there are different colleges uh, that are there that you can apply to right so it depends totally upon you your budget your preferences but uh, what from what my experience tells me this is that that's what I'm going to share with you right in this video we're going to talk about Memorial University of Newfoundland and Labrador so you can just go to Google and uh, write Memorial University Canada and this is their first link that you can click on and this is their website now one thing I should tell you they are very prompt in responding to any queries uh, of the students right now the university might be off for a new year holidays but from the 4th of January they said they're going to resume their services so if you've got any questions about becoming a student in the Memorial University, it's very easy. Uh, you can just contact one of their uh, supervisors or their admin uh, personnel and they would be happy to help you out. Now from my experience, whenever I emailed them, I actually received a response within 48 hours and that's very, very quick if you think about it. Okay, so there are different programs as I told you already what you need to do is that you could just go to programs here and this page will open so you can search for any program that you like now for example I have searched a uh, business program then you can write management programs whichever field you are from you can actually search for that field by writing from this filter and they say write about the program that you are interested in and they will tell you all the options now Memorial University has actually got different campuses for example this is their main campus that is St. John's campus St. John's is a city that is in the eastern part of Canada it is along the Atlantic coast it is the easternmost city of Canada so and the weather there is uh, a bit cold because these Atlantic provinces tend to be uh, very harsh in terms of weather but having said that there are all the basic facilities available from what I have researched about from what my uh, colleagues tell me who study at Memorial University right so uh, for today's video we are going to cover this master's program there's also a bachelor's of business administration program that is your BBA but that is offered at Grenfell campus at Grenfell campus and I don't know much about it so um, I'll research about it in, in, a, in a separate video and I might cover that right so today we're going to talk about master's programs and especially the MBA program okay let the page load I'll just open all of these so that they are loading perfectly okay so coming back to the business administration program this is your MBA why they are telling you why you should choose this program here are the details uh, you need to be a full-time student this is a course based program so no research is involved MBA is two years then MBA SEE these are different types of MBAs that are available their application deadline is February 1st now this is important if you're applying for your MBA program and you haven't taken IELTS yet you can send them your English language proficiency letter and they would be happy to offer you admission based on that but uh, you need to meet other requirements as well right now I had actually filed my application last year uh, but I had to defer my intake from this year to the next year because unfortunately as I told you my spouse and my son's visa could not get approved due to various reasons so I had addressed those reasons and now I'm awaiting the results 
and I would ask you all to pray for me as well. So uh, these are the funding opportunities, there are entrance scholarship, but these uh, should not be your priority because you should not be uh, focusing on these as an international student. First of all, you need to have admission. After that, these opportunities uh, become open to you, right? So this is the MBA program and for international students, you can see it is just 12,000 Canadian dollars. So that is pretty cheap if you think about it. If you could search about all the different options in Canada, you would not come across such a cheap university. But this doesn't mean that it doesn't offer that quality because it is a designated learning institution and uh, it has very good reviews. Its alumni are working in various different organizations around the world and even including the big four like Deloitte and others, right? So, but this used to be the fees for international students up to two years back, I think, but um, since last year, they've also introduced an, a special fee. So the total program now costs around 36,000 Canadian dollars because 24,000 Canadian dollars has been imposed as the special fee. Still, uh, I can safely say and confidently say that it is one of the cheapest MBA programs in Canada because MBAs tend to be and business schools overall tend to be very expensive um, when it comes to uh, the degree program. Okay, so now coming to the description of the program, there are 20 courses. MBA program offers 20 courses and you can all read these details by yourselves. Um, now. What is important are these minimum admission requirements. Now, many people actually ask me uh, that whether they need to, if they are especially from Pakistan, whether they need to get their degrees attested from HEC or they need an equivalency certificate from WES or another organization. I'll cover the equivalency part as well. But for admission into this university, there is no such requirement. Um, you don't need to have the degrees attested from any, anywhere or you don't need uh, West equivalency uh, because they accept uh, directly uh, the degrees that you send them, the transcripts that you send them. It should be a higher education commission recognized degree. That's it. That's all they require. So now here they write that you need to have a minimum GPA of 2.75 on a four point scale. But if you your scale is different, you can e email them and they'll tell you. Now, GMAT score of 550 or a balanced GRE score of at least 302. Now, I exactly had 302 in my attempt, so I was able to secure an admission, but overall my other profile was really good, so I just met the minimum criteria for their GRE score, and uh, my other profile actually uh, got me admission into this university. So if you're taking TOEFL, but I would not recommend taking TOEFL at this point because uh, uh, for the visa and the STS process, they do not accept TOEFL scores. So you'll have to take IELTS again because you need to score a minimum of 6.0 uh, in IELTS. But for admission into this university, you need a minimum of 7.0, right? So you need to aim for this score, this band. These bands you need to aim for and you would be safe to go. Now these are other programs, but I'll cover them later. They have similar uh, requirements, okay? So you could just read about them here and this is the profile. Now coming on to the fee structure. This is the part that confuses most of the students. Now for uh, the SDS program, when the total fees is uh, 36,000 Canadian dollars for the entire MBA program, if I tell you this, then you would say that uh, my uh, one year tuition fee would be around 18,000 Canadian dollars and that I need to pay that amount and then again I need to submit my GIC so that total would go up to around um, 26,000 Canadian dollars or uh, 28,000 Canadian dollars. So that's a lot of money in order to apply for a Canadian visa especially when I'm saying that this is the cheapest university. How come that is the case? So. I was also confused about this aspect because uh, uh, I was also looking for cheaper options. So I actually contacted them through email and asked them what I needed, how much amount did I need to uh, uh, submit 
as my one year tuition fee so they said that the special fees is uh, not exempted but you have the option of paying your tuition uh, uh, special fees when you start your semester here so for applying for a visa you just need to pay the tuition fee and that was around uh, 4800 something canadian dollars so i just paid 4800 canadian dollars submitted my gic for myself the spouse and the kid to 17000 but in your case it's just going to be uh, 15 to around 15000 canadian dollars in total to apply for your uh, MBA uh, for your student visa through STS program so that's really cheap I hope you understood that uh, even if you didn't so the details are here uh, master's programs two years for example for international students the fees is around nine thousand six hundred sixty six dollars so you divide that by two and that's the fees that you need to pay for one year now here they don't mention that special fees but they have yeah they do mention it here now so this is the minimum expense that you need to expect i have it open here so this is the minimum expense form for 2022 2023 students in canadian dollars so here you can see uh and don't get confused by these master's program plan a plan b plan c these are for part-time students you are going to be a full-time student right so master's program payment plan a would be applicable to you so if you see that there are six semesters in total as i told you that in one year there are three semesters in canada and this is the fees that you need to pay one six one one per semester so if you if you multiply it by three that would be your yearly fees and that would come to around the four thousand eight hundred something canadian dollars if i'm not sure you can make your calculation in a calculator as well right and this is a special fees now you can also explore the special fees for different programs some of them have a very cheap international uh, special fees for example this uh, graduate diploma in education this has special fees of 3500 canadian dollars only uh, whereas in master of accounts you pay 11282 so you can explore this uh, form in detail in order to know about the different the fee structure of the overall programs now here is the mba one that we are looking for uh, master of business administration it says that uh, the international students need to pay a total of 24000 uh, canadian dollars uh, to be paid in installments of 4000 in each semester so you would be paying one year tuition fee and in each semester you need to pay 4000 canadian dollars now i know that uh, this might sound a lot but i think international students can actually manage them and uh, especially those who are interested in going abroad um, i believe they uh, can arrange for these funds if they can't um, there are other also options uh, all sorts of options available so you can actually pro uh, choose other programs for example this is the msc management now this has got a special fees of only about 10250 canadian dollars to be paid in uh, 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 so 1708 in each semester okay so this is a very lucrative option but for this the admission requirements would be different for example you might need to because this could be a research based program and you might need to uh, contact a professor there because you need a professor's approval uh, to be uh, your supervisor and they should consent to being your supervisor and then only you can get admission into these programs which are uh, thesis based programs so these are all the details um, you could go through them by yourselves this also includes the meal plans the personal needs settling allowance etc so all of these are included right okay now if you're really interested in applying to memorial you just need to click the apply button and you've got all the tutorial videos even helping you fill out these forms so you can just play the video and follow the tutorial along and that's it you can apply now there are a few other important things that you need to consider so for example you need to identify and collect all the required application materials now what are the application materials these are the application materials you need to fill out an online application how much does it cost they will be mentioning it here i'm sure they must have given it here so if you if you if it's not mentioned it's just around 120 canadian dollars to apply for the mba program if i remember correctly so you need to have transcripts from your school uh, if you're an intermediate student, uh, if you've just recently uh, passed out from college, 
or if you are a university graduate already and they consider it as an undergraduate degree if you have that you need transcripts for those if you're applying for MBA of course you will need uh, four years uh, bachelor's degree uh, now you can, if you have a two years bachelor's degree which used to be the case in many uh, cases in Pakistan you can just contact the university and ask them about it all right so these you need to have two ref letters of appraisal graduate reference now these referees these are important especially for an MBA program when you're applying uh, you need to have one professional reference and one academic one so one professional reference would be from someone uh, who is your boss who could be who could actually comment on your abilities and they also provide you a specific format on which you should uh, they actually email them the reference letter and now they can upload the your referees can upload the letters directly through this portal okay so that's pretty much it and then you need to have a resume now I will have a separate video on this how to make a Canadian style resume because there are resumes that we make in the subcontinent that has got pictures these are fancy but Canadian style is a bit different they do not care about how you look they only care about who you are as a person and uh, your resume should reflect that only and that's what the CV or the curriculum vitae should be okay and then uh, proof of English language proficiency, I think I've already covered it. You need to have uh, TOEFL, you need to have uh, IELTS, any one of these. Duolingo is also acceptable, but I would highly recommend taking academic IELTS because this is ultimately going to help you out in your um, uh, application for your visa. All right, you are going to need it anyway, so why not just pay one time fees and that's, then just get this done. And man has got their own language test as well. So if you're interested in that, you could uh, get this done. Test score reports for the GRE. You need to have this number. They have a specific number on which you need to send your test reports. So you would need to note down the code, but you would actually be able to find the code uh, when you take the GRE. When you complete the test, they will ask you to send your score report to three institutions. So you could just uh, select Memorial University and they will also automatically have that code and you could select that option. But I will cover that when I, cover, when I uh, make a video about the GRE test and how you're supposed to send your test scores, right? Any additional requirements? Now, university could actually ask for a financial guarantee and or an authorization for use of representative. This is not for you if you're applying for yourself. Uh, are there any prerequisites? You can actually check them out here. Uh, if you do not have a business background, what are all the courses that you need to take in order to be eligible for your admission in the MBA program? And that's pretty much it. And then you need to just submit your application and hope for the best. I did that. Uh, I actually got a response from them within two months, I believe. Um, I will also share with you my admission letter that I got and also my deferment letter. Uh, it was a smooth process for me. They just issued the letter. So that was the first process back. It was done. And then uh, I took the IELTS exam as well because I applied for my admission with an English language proficiency letter. And I'll also share the format of that letter with you just to just so you get an idea right and these are all the videos that you need to find if, if you're you are applying for a research based program this is the video that you need to watch that that will help you how to find a supervisor in your field and contact them about your program and then actually get into touch with them and once they give you the approval you could actually apply for that program so these are schools of art and sciences i'll cover these later uh, because these are for undergraduate students so that was all about the MBA program let me know if you guys have any questions and how are you finding these videos I hope you're finding them helpful and useful uh, do let me know in the comments below and also like share and subscribe this channel because the more views and the more subscribers I get the YouTube algorithm actually promotes these videos and it helps create awareness among people and that's the basic purpose of this channel as well uh, to create awareness to understand different options because most people have got the talent they've got the money and the resources but they do not have the right direction they end up uh, spending a lot of money uh, uh, on consultants and whatnot 
so i don't think that is necessary if an average guy like me can do it then i believe anybody out there can do it so best of luck to you guys all right and uh, i'll see you in the next video thank you